Here at Berrycroft Hub, we've been inspired by recent papers on the Hoyle Fells tool, which may have been used for rope making. A lot of people have said they're not sure how this might have been used. We're going to give it a go. This is experimental archaeology in action. It could go horribly wrong. So, I am going to need one person to hold the middle. Who wants to do that yes. bit? Yes, yeah, you're going to hold that bit. All right. I need one each of you on... Uh, one of you on this end, and the other four of you, can you come down to this end? You're going to be on twisting. You're going to have a strand each. Right, that's great. Can we just come down to the end? That's all right. So, this is a quick and dirty experiment, and we are actually using raffia for this. Lime bast is going to be the next one to use, but because we have two colours of raffia, we thought it would give us a chance to see exactly what's going on. Can you all squidge in so you can see what's going on? First thing you're going to need to do is twist. So my four people here are controlling the twist of the four plies. We're going to twist in a clockwise direction. And just keep twisting. We want to get all of these as tight as we can. Really, really, really tight. I suspect in real life we probably could do this with two people twisting two strands at a time but plenty of willing hands we might as well that's it keep the twist going we want as much on as possible the twist is running through the tool which is great it's coming back to the section when we got our strands completely twisted and this is great get to the point where it's starting to slightly crinkle is ideal and then just keep working back so you get your whole bundles. This side, we're going to twist it in the opposite direction. Anybody who's ever made cordage before knows you need to twist away, cross towards you. You're spinning and flying at the same time. The person who's holding the tool is going to very slowly move it towards the twisters. And that in theory, it's going to help lay the fibres evenly and stop them jumping back and forth across each other. You're I'll doing great. Twisting. You're almost there. Yeah, you can start twisting. So you're also twisting in a clockwise direction. Clockwise? Yes. So you should be twisting the opposite direction. They're twisting clockwise. Oh, right. Yeah, because you're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit it's so horrible. It's, 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 it's springing. Yeah. That's, that's lame, isn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. that's lame. All right, now you're slowly going to move this. Yeah. Oh. Let me cut that bit off. Yeah, let's yeah, slowly move that back. Just as fast. No, it's just... all right. We're just we're experimenting. So okay. that looks as if it's laying quite nicely, doesn't it? Do you want me to let the tension off and see if it goes yeah. boing? Yeah, and if it hasn't, if it does go boing, then we've um, then we've uh, yeah. then we've done it in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just laying. Yeah, have you done it one way? Does it make any difference if we twist it the other way? Let's, let's just see what happens. It feels like it would sort of um, twist itself. That like looks more untwisty, doesn't it? Let's see what happens with this. I think you're untwisting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. that actually feels like it's going to stay, whereas before it mm. felt like it was. So we should right. be we should be twisting this one in the opposite direction as we did that one. So that's twisting that way. Yeah, that's what I thought. But that's twisting that way. Crossroads. Yeah, it's going anti-clockwise. Yeah, I think I think it should. If I let go, look, it stays. It stays. Let's take without them. Experimental. Whereas before it felt like it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you keep twisting. I've forgotten which way I was going. Oh, do you see how those have jumped a little bit? Oh, yeah. We, we, we lost tension slightly and they're, they're, they're laying a little differently. Sorry, I'm no, that's fine. I think this, this is still entirely entirely valid because it's us experimenting it with it for the first real try. And yes, where that's moving smoothly, they're all laying, laying nice and evenly. Brilliant. Okay, let's keep... Bringing that up towards the top, so maybe you might need to move your hands closer in. Don't worry, don't worry, you're not going too So we've done a certain amount of faffing around with this. The jury is slightly out whether we've gone the, the correct way, but that looks as if it's that looks as if it's now the proof of the pudding will be if you let go of that, does it? Does it stay as that? Yeah. There we are. Brilliant. Okay, let's have a close-up.
lovely cameramen <laughs> over here. <laughs> so this tool is similar in size to the Hoylefels one. It's not the same material. This original one was mammoth ivory, this is antler. The four holes with their rifling are basically telling us which direction to twist. They haven't actually done the twisting for us. This has controlled the twist as we moved. And when we did it evenly, the four plies laid. When we stopped and it jumped a little bit, they came out of sync. But the finished rope is really nice and stable. And with a tiny bit of practice, I think we could make a lot of thick rope very, very quickly using a tool like that. Thank you everyone, that is a really nice bit of putting that to the test. Woohoo! <laughs>